on board the first Beneteau Oceanus Yups 54 in the UK. Do you recognise it? If you do, it's probably because it's the same powerful hull shape as the all-Italian first 53, which launched to much fanfare a couple of years ago. Why is that important? Because I think if you were typically looking to add performance on a yacht or a car, you would take that a production model and add carbon mass or a taller rig and sails or fuel injection to the engine, whatever it is. But here, Beneteau have started with a performance cruising hull and then offered that as a luxury cruiser. So you're getting that promise of guaranteed speed from the beginning. And that's made possible really from the modern developments in hull shapes that comes stems from race boats where you have the fuller bow sections and then the beam that is carried right aft. So you apply that to a cruising boat and you get a lot of space. And here you've got the stability and the speed. So on paper then we're looking at speed, space, performance and potentially quite a lot of comfort. having a cracking afternoon sailing here it's sort of given this is a boat which I would say is typically designed for sailing in the sun like the med and lighter winds as well we've actually got that here in the UK in the Solon we've had sort of 13 to 16 knots of breeze warm sunshine perfect conditions to try a boat like this and we've only had white sails and you know this is a so this is Ancaster's boat on the south coast of UK and this is how a boat would typically come. So with in-mast furling, this actually has a Genoa rather than a self-tacking jib, but we've just got the white sails and we've been fetching, reaching and sailing upwind. Sailing upwind, speed over ground wise, looking at around the nine knot mark, something like that. But there's quite a lot of tide running as well and fetching up to 10, 10 and a half knots and even, you know, beam reaching as well. So that's pretty good performance and the, win the take home from that is how easily you can cover off miles. Very easily indeed, it's very light work on the, on the helm, twin rudders spaced far apart. It would be very light work for an autopilot. So if you were doing some proper ocean miles, you could really get places with very little effort. The boat heals but is stable, sits, once it is healing and going upwind, it's fun, you know, in this sort of wind, double figure breeze, it's really enjoyable sailing with a boat that's kind of straight out of the box. We haven't got any performance sails or anything and the actual layout is pretty similar to that first 53 really in terms of how you're sailing the boat. There are obvious changes to the deck layout, including the mainsail arch and this bimini, which we've had up, but a, a fixed hard bimini is an option as well on this, you know, the very cruising based cockpit layout. You know, the main sailing area is still kind of the same as the first in that you have these two winches and all your lines brought back here, which completely makes sense for this Oceanus yacht. It was actually a bit more surprising for the first yacht to have a, a performance boat where all the lines are quite close together. But here, you know, we've been sailing two up all day and um, it's, been, it's been pretty easy, easy enough to manage the sheets and running rigging from two powered winches that are, you know, as you can see, easily reachable from the helm. Two speed winches on each. And it, and it works well. So one of the things that impresses me the most about the deck layout is having walk around access. That's really makes you feel pretty safe and secure because you, ha you have a high bulwark which goes around the side deck. We'll show you that going forward. But you walk around the um, helm stations and even if this bimini is up, 
you know, you've got clear access or indeed from the tender garage or bathing platform up here, clear access into the cockpit. And when normally when you think about sailing you on a yacht, you would go over the combings from the cockpit, which kind of doesn't make any sense at all. It's much more sensible to have a situation like this where you can safely and easily get out onto the side decks. And if you are on the side decks, it feels secure when you're on them. And then moving into the cockpit, yeah, you can see massive amount of space back here, 16 feet of it, five meters of beam. But it doesn't feel that um, daunting when you're at an angle. You know, it's, you're, you're either sat or you're standing on the windward helm and the, the space to the, other, to the other wheel is not too bad. You know, this is, it's easy to keep hold of, hold of one side when crossing to the other. And they've done the cockpit layout smartly by splitting the tables here. So you essentially have, you know, two sides of the cockpit, small tables, but they, you know, they fold out and they drop down to form sunbeds. And lounging space is not going to be an issue on this boat. You've got plenty of, pl plenty of spaces to lie in the sun. You'll also notice, uh, as well as this bimini I mentioned before, the spray hood arch, which is typical of, a, of an Oceanus yacht or, or the larger Oceanuses as well. And that just keeps this boom and main sheet out of here. So the whole of this huge cockpit, there's no, there's no sailing systems, no running rig and whatever. That's just kept, the sheets and lines are kept right out of it by the helms and the main sheet and booms out of the way. Plenty of stowage in general on this boat. Deep aft quarter lockers. And then in the center of the cockpit sole, this big hatch here, which gives access, deck access into the dinghy garage. There's also an electric fold down bathing platform as well with integrated steps into it. So it's easy to go from cockpit onto your bathing platform, go for a swim. And you'll see from there, the size of the dinghy garage. I'll, I won't open this now because it's full of the fenders and lines, but you can fit a 2.7 meter deflated bow rib that's the boat on this or inflated 2.4 meters a decent sized tender again that's the beam buys you that back here elsewhere uh, you have these same as the first actually these lifting foot stands here useful when you're at hill at heel on the windward side and then moving forward as i mentioned before two winches and all the lines brought back to these two winches either side. This means you need to be methodic, methodical about how you use your lines and keep those that aren't being used coiled nicely, ready to go, but out of the way. Benetton have come up with a smart solution here with this folding part of this cushion, presuming you do have the cushions, and this aft part of the bench lifts on a strut to give access into a good sized tail locker. And that's what I mean, you get rid of the main halyard or the out hall for the inmost main and you just leave the sheets you need, as we have here, the main sheet and the Genoa winch on the winch ready to go. And then if you do need to tweak something, you can get it out and play with it and then put it away again. Keeps it all nice and clean. And then moving forward from there, you've got two shallow cockpit bench lockers, a good size life raft locker under the sole there and for the uh, washboards as well. And then you see the real benefit of having this spray hood arch is it creates also, as well as keeping the main out of the cockpit, this room for a huge spray hood. This is a massive area under here, out of the wind, a lot of comfort. You'd also see quite quickly that a, these cushions must be one of the first tick, po tick box options you're gonna you're going to go for because without them it's a very flat there's really no backrest at all so they're very clever designs because you've got a lot of comfort out of those which you wouldn't have without them but again loads more lounging space here so those tables drop down big sunbathing area here and again on the foredeck so if you want to tan you can so you see the deep bulwarks here and then you've got a step up here and a further step up on the side deck. Something to grab hold of there, but as you move forward of that arch, 
you notice it's very flat, big coach roof, plenty of space for solar panels or more lounging space. This has the Genoa track integrated. It's quite nicely integrated inboard here, but as standard, you have the self tacking track, which is still on there. Outboard shrouds, and then here's the second step up where the bulwark reduces to foot height there and forward lounging area for the sun pads. And then moving forward, we'll show you the crew cabin and the anchor locker. This can be a crew skipper's cabin or just a sail locker as standard. See, so I'm five foot 10, plenty of space in here. This is where you put your kids that you don't like, or still a loo here, sink, uh, and a berth as well. It's pretty well fitted out actually. It's a good amount of space. And you'll see also how that, having this bulkhead here pushes that forward cabin back to create the room for that, that wide amount of beam in the forward cabin. And then moving into the interior via this quite regal, gently angled companionway, which is really nice. It, leads you very easily into a very inviting modern European design, like a spacious luxury apartment really. And, you know, and everyone that's seen the first 53 will recognize the design and layout from that. Not a huge amount of change, um, in terms of layout options and styling, this is, has a bit more um, woodwork effect rather than than sort of white painted panels. But the key features that we really liked on the first 53 remain, particularly these fiddled and radiused corners built into the furniture. They work really well. Uh, not the sort of sharp corner edges you're used to seeing on, on modern boats. And it, you also probably notice those rails coming down the companionway as well. It feels secure walking through the boat, even though you've got plenty of headroom. You've got long rails along the coach roof and then those fiddled, fiddles to handle, uh, to, to grab hold of moving forward. This is just a fixed table at which you can sit four and as it is, or add a couple of director's chairs to make it six. That was a very comfortable, thick cushioned lounge area on the, the first 53 with a much smaller table, which dropped down to fill in there. Uh, so here you get, uh, I guess more of a conventional saloon, more seating here in a chaise long area and a proper chart table. But you still get the rest of it's very similar. So three cabins and three heads, or three cabins and two heads. The main decision to make then is if you're gonna have that third heads, it would push this large fridge section forward. You'd lose that work surface area there. You'd still have that large fridge and the heads would split in here. It would start on that panel there. So it impacts some room on that on that aft port cabin. As it is though, brilliant galley section. Um, it's yeah, again, it's more like a a modern apartment, really. Social, light, inviting. And you see so much natural light. Biscontini may have drawn a very beamy hull shape, so there's plenty of space, but his fellow Italian Lorenzo Argento has given this a very inviting, naturally light look uh, and light woodwork as well and furnishing. So long coach roof windows, long overheads, and then those huge hull ports each side, which continue in the cabins as well. Plenty of work surface space, plenty of space for your mod cons. Loads of refrigeration space in that domestic style fridge and 
a drop down fridge there as well. And then they've integrated that microwave oven in there and nice slide drawers, those soft close drawers throughout the boat. So deep storage in there, a bin below the sink. More storage below there, another double blocker there, and then a neat pull out below that central fiddle section. A feature I do like is the amount of space in the bilges that's usable for stowage. So you can put all your tins and bottles in below the, the galley there and the central one lifts as does that one in the saloon as well. So plenty of usable space there. You see the structural beams in there and, and a nice use of um, yeah, some rubber dampening is all over there as well. So it doesn't creak too much. Still a bit underfoot. You see they've varnished the undersides. If I was being picky, it'd be so nice to continue that on the on the sides of the um, of the ply as well. So stowage not an issue. Really, it's uh, yeah, you've got more under all of these saloon seats. Double cupboard under there as well. And then these panels, as I said, lift. So you've got the hot water below there and a good sort of 35 meter deep section in the center. Same again, below the central saloon sole with access to the keel bolts as well. What's quite nice is the, um, to gain this sense of space that you get throughout, things are hidden away but accessible. So below here is uh, battery and fuse, you need 240 volt access hidden away there. And then this is where your main switchboard is. So closer to the companion way, you've got Beneteau's neat touchscreen system here. So it's easy, easy to check battery status, uh, look at the water tank, see how high the water tanks or full the water tanks are. Uh, 12 volt switch panel here, and then this uh, second one just for mounting extra instruments as well. And that is a push button uh, tele television which raises out of there, flat screen that comes out of there, optional. That switch panel space leaves a very tidy area for the chart table. So that literally is a nice large desk area, still got a lift top on it. and good lighting throughout. Again, yeah, ambient, and there is soft LED indirect lighting around the floors as well. Neat touch with a chaise long seat, which angles up there. Super comfortable when you're sitting there. Moving into the forward cabin, you drop down one step, and then it raises again around that vast island berth. So the forward of here, you have a, a crew cabin or sail locker and then an anchor locker in front of that. So it pushes this area back. There's, you can see the volume you get from the full bow sections, proper island walk around each side with a seat, a seat each side of this berth. Again, loads of natural light, two overheads and these big hull ports as well and the sense of space you get by splitting the heads and shower works really really well so to port here a double seat in the shower area small overhead hatch for ventilation could maybe if i was being picky i might even see ask for a sink here if that would be possible in there and then you'd have the option of you know, brushing your teeth in the heads or in the shower, but this is the heads area here. And you notice uh, again the dampeners on the 
on the doors and really nice quality of fixtures and fittings. So as I mentioned before, all the drawers are soft clothing, the actual latches on the doors, magnetic, so they don't stick out there or give you anything to catch onto. It's closed when you shut the door. Again, good stowage in here as well. So that single lock on the aft bulkhead with the drawers and one tall wardrobe style one lit each side. So if you didn't see our walkthrough video of the first 53, we'll post that here or at the end of the video. But you can, so you'll be able to see the differences in the layouts and the finish of the interiors. We obviously looked a little bit into that cabin, but we were, they're largely identical in this format. So we'll come in now into the starboard aft one, but while we're here, this grand staircase lifts on struts for the main access to the engine. This, I believe, is the Yamar 80 in on the test boat, but plenty of access space and light around it. And there's two large panels each side, so you can get in all around that engine. You can get in from either side as well. And then look at these aft cabins. Again, plenty of natural light and good stowage space as well. This one has compared to the starboard aft cabin has a second wardrobe. So good storage space. Otherwise they are largely the same. Good size double, loads of natural light. Plenty of little nooks and crannies and well thought out options for stowage and livability. And then between the cabins are these big panels to access the gen set, which gives you an idea about how beamy it is back here to have that much space between the cabins and still have a nice big double berth as well with space outboard of that. So this main difference there is you've got your private access from the starboard cabin into this head. Otherwise, very similar cabins. Don't feel like you're in the cheap seats anywhere on, on, on any of these three cabins at all. Slightly tight access, but all very nicely done. Angled heads, small wash basin area, and the standing shower room forward. The term Oceanus yacht may get lost in translation a little, as you may naturally relate it to the Oceanus range, but this is Beneteau's premium range, more semi custom yachts with higher spec and quality fit outs. Its 62 was a bit quirkier and boxy looking, taking cues from the motorboat world but this 54 is a very appealing design. So who's it for? At first I thought Beneteau were just cost cutting by using the same hole shape, but now I see how much sense it makes. You've got a great design, a fast modern hull by America's Cup designer Roberto Biscontini and styling by Lorenzo Argento, someone more used to designing for top marks such as Brenta and Wally. If you're a fan of the Oceanus 46.1 or the 51.1, where did you go to in the Beneteau range before now, if you wanted something larger, faster, sexier, higher end? Beneteau didn't really have an option. Well, they do now, definitely. This Oceanus Yachts 54 offers space, speed and comfort, and particularly those wanting to sail in warmer waters. This is a really potent, interesting new option to have.